on October 19th. Uh, first item on the agenda is changes to the agenda. So I've got two um, ad additions to the ad agenda. When we return from public session, we've got uh, resignation of board chair. And then in addition to that, so I got that under 4-1, 4A would be elected board chair. Mm -hmm. Got you. And potentially how that goes, it could be an additional to elect a uh, vice chair. Okay. Resignation. And got you. Um, how do we feel about Timekeeper tonight? We don't have a big agenda, but uh, um, I think it's not a bad idea to set some parameters for, especially for our executive session with people um, being. I, I don't think that would take more than 10 minutes. I'd say 15. Okay. Be safe. Um, let's give it 10 for a new board, a board chair, vice chair, a resignation chair, vice chair. Can we do that in 10 minutes, I think? And then um, the board survey, 30 minutes. Does that sound reasonable? Jenny, do you think that's a reasonable time? Yeah, that's, yeah, I think that's good. Okay, good. Do you want me to um, play time? time for, yes, please, if you would, thank you. What is the most effective way though, as timekeeper for me to like flash that we're, you I know. I think just, just speak up, just speak up and say, we're five, you know, give us, if, 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 if it's a short time, tell us when we're there. If it's a long time, tell us when we're like halfway and then when we got five minutes, kind of something like that. Okay. I think I think that's that, way, that way it keeps us in our mind as opposed to we're just charging it. Exactly. It refocuses us. Yes. Thank you. Good. Um, all right. Now, uh, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm, uh, I felt like Kathy a little bit. You know, when I became town moderator, I didn't know you started right away. Brad had just told me to come down there. And so I had no idea how to run a meeting. And that's sort of how I feel tonight a little bit. So I'll do my best, uh, but please uh, please feel free to correct me on anything I might do uh, wrong or in, in the wrong um, order. So we have our change. Uh, do we need to move the changes to agenda or they can just be added? They don't need to be the action item. Okay. They can just be added. All right, I'll entertain a motion to, um, uh, to enter executive session for a personnel issue. Um, who will so move moved. that motion? So moved by Amy. Second. Seconded. Seconded by Jenny. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Um, we will enter executive session and we will wait for, we're we going to another place, Ray. I, I just sent that to the board and to the superintendent. Thank you. All right, I'm going to leave this meeting. Make sure to remember everybody to check out of this meeting before you check into the other one. Thank you. We'll see you in a few moments. Hello, everybody. It is 6.38. Before they went in, they talked about 10 or 15 minutes worth of time. Uh, so I will try to remember to come back about... 645 uh, and just give that update. Thank you. So at 645, the uh, board is still in the executive session. Uh, the board is uh, still in executive session.
The board is uh, still in executive session. Got my agenda while we're waiting for Keith. Uh, Jamie, quick question. Um, I'm not sure, do we have to vote to accept a resignation? Yes, yes I thought so, okay. Thank you. So at uh, 7.06, I believe this is correct procedure, right? To say we, um, we are back from executive session with, uh, with no announcement. Oh, damn it. Sorry. No action. No action. Thank you. Um, uh, the next agenda item is a uh, resignation of the chair. Uh, does Carl then speak? Carl could just move his resignation. Yeah. Do you move your resignation? I absolutely move my resignation. You move your resignation. Uh, do we have a second for the resignation of the board chair? Second. Thank you, Amy. Um, all in favor of accepting the resignation signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, it's inappropriate, so I'm just going to say abstain. Okay, good. Um, all in opposed? The ayes have it. Um, the chairman has resigned. We need to uh, elect a new chairman. Um, I will open the floor for nominations. I'd like to nominate Ethan Bowen. Ethan Bowen has been nominated. Is there a second? I second. Jenny has seconded. Is there any discussion? Where you can grill me about my qualifications. Are there any other nominations? There being none, I'll in motion that nominations be closed. Second. Uh, nobody, somebody need to nominate first, entertain the motion to close nominations. Sure. Move to close the nominations. <laughs> uh, thank you, Amy. There you go, second. Yeah, sometimes the, the timing sequence of Zoom makes it a little creepy. Okay. We have one nomination for the board chairman of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District for Ethan Bowen. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Again, abstain. All opposed. The ayes have it. Thank you all. Um, we will, I am now the chairman of the board. Uh, I want to find a little bit more about this. Thank you, Carl. And thank you for your time. Thank you for your leadership and I will be calling you. <laughs> um, uh, I want to get some clarification. I just want to say, I want to get some clarification on this vice chair, because Dina did say in an email that she thought it was not a proper thing. And I think it's an essential thing. Because no, Ethan, the chairman. I think she misunderstood and thought that you were indicating that you could just continue to as the chair the rest of the time without oh, a nomination. Well, all right. That's why I was correcting you. You could open the meeting. That's the role of the vice chair. Okay. Okay. Good. I just it made her sound like it didn't even exist because she said somewhere no. she didn't think it ex quite existed. Um, I would entertain a motion, uh, nominations for a vice chair for the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District. I would nominate Amy Wilt. I second. Any further nominations? There being none, I'll entertain a motion that nominations be closed. Did somebody do that? I, oh, uh, I don't think they got, <laughs> we can't second. I didn't hear the, uh, oh, the ridiculous. Sorry, I make a motion to close the nomination for vice chair. Thank you. I second. Jenny seconded. Megan made the motion. Jenny seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Amy Wilt, no, any opposed? There being no opposed, Amy Wilt is now the vice chair of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District. Very good. Moving on. 
Our next agenda item, the main agenda item for tonight is to discuss the board survey. Um, do we have uh, the PDF available to put up? And I'd also, um, do we have objectives about what we, how we want to, what do we want to come out of this? Well, I don't think we have any specific objective personally. I think that it's um, everyone's kind of seeing this for the first time just to kind of distribute the information and uh, it's a PDF. Um, so those on the phone won't be able to see it, but I can get the information out or um, Jamie, I'm not sure the best way to do, to do that in terms of people that might be interested. We can, we can push it out through Blackboard Connect and put it on the websites. And I would encourage you to put it on Front Porch Forum. We've had luck with that in other districts. And I believe Ray has a PDF. I'm not sure how I can present. So I was thinking that if he could present. Ray, you were just presenting. Right? It's up now, Jenny. Sure. Um, is there Jenny, a way to can I, may I ask, is this, is this in all, at all different from what you shared with us at our um, regular October meeting? Um, there's one, there's one graph that changed and then I added some stuff at the end about the open-ended questions, but for the most part, it's pretty similar. Do we, I'm just curious if we need to go point, if you want to go point by point through here and open discussion on each point or. I was thinking I would just present the whole thing and then, right. um, in the terms of keeping on time, um, right. If people have questions and um, it's a lot to digest also. So, um, you know, if people had questions afterwards. Um, I think so then I will instruct, please, the rest of the board, let's let Jenny get through her whole presentation before we ask questions. Thank you. Okay, so I'll try and go through this as quickly as we can. Um, not much on this first slide. It just shows that the survey was collected from August 11th to September 30th. There's 102, I'm sorry, 104 responses, 44 of which were from Stockbridge and 60 which were from Rochester. And just kind of um, kind of an overview of all of the slides. Each, each question um, is broken down by town. So in all of the questions, the blue will be Rochester re responses and orange will be Stockbridge. There's one slide where where things are combined, but um, for the most part, we'll be focusing on what the totals are um, as a unified district, but uh, we know there's interest there and in seeing by town. So it's included by town also. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of breeze through real quickly um, in terms of parents of existing Rochester Stockbridge students, there were 17 total responses that were parents. So um, the bottom left there, the yeses, there's 17 total. Um, a majority were not, um, you know, we have pretty small school numbers. A majority were um, just general community members. There were more um, alumni, Ro Rochester Stockbridge, there were 38 that answered that they're a parent of a Rochester Stockbridge alumni. Just some kind of general demographics for you. Uh, next slide. Um, so the top one, what is your preferred campus configuration of RSUD? Um, the answer that, that got the most points um, with 44 responses was retaining separate elementary schools. Um, the second highest score was D, which is a split, split configuration. And then B um, came in as the third with um, the elementary school being used at Rochester. And then towards the bottom, in terms of um, in terms of which which campus folks would prefer at the Rochester campus, whether it be the elementary or the high school, there was a pretty high response for using the elementary building. Which um, it doesn't show up the percentages on here, but the the elementary building came in at fifty nine percent. So that's um, kind of in line with with what we've been thinking all along. So that's good that that's kind of conforming to that. And then another question, which was actually 
um, I believe this question had stemmed from a prior, um, we solicited input for, que for questions of the survey. And I believe that this was one of the, the questions that we got from that. So, um, and that would be um, kind of in line with the, the question at split grade campuses was what, what community members felt was the best configuration for students and um, pretty high numbers said it depends on the situation instead of just automatically saying, you know, multi-age classrooms is best or single grade classrooms is met. So that's um, like um, a wide variety of, of input on that question and some uncertainty as well. Uh, next slide. Uh, so the next page has to do with um, residents' opinions about various um, campus configurations. I'm not gonna go through all of them. Um, the one that had, um, so some of these slides, I'm also gonna kind of combine combine some of the answers. So a one was strongly disagree and five was strongly agree. So in some of these, it doesn't show up on the slides, but I've kind of calculated, um, you know, whether you agree or strongly agree is kind of a gray area. So in some of these, I'm just gonna kind of go through big picture, talk about um, agree and strongly agree versus disagree and strongly disagree. Um, so it doesn't, like I said, these don't show the percentages on here, but of the four um, kind of different campus configurations, the one that had the highest number of agree and strongly agree was the top left, which is retaining separate separate campuses, which had 53% either agreed or strongly agreed, as opposed to 30% that strongly disagreed or disagreed. And the one with the highest amount that they disagreed with was um, moving all the kids at the Stockbridge campus, which 5% either agreed or strongly agreed to do that. Um, so folks, you know, can kind of digest this later or look at what, you know, more specific things um, are for each one, but those are kind of the, kind of the highlights on each extreme of what folks agreed with and disagreed with. And then as you can tell the other two are kind of, kind of in the middle. Um, there are some differences that we won't get into here about, you know, what, what Rochester residents were replying versus Stockbridge, but, um, the data does show what that is, but in terms of just doing a brief overview, I'm just gonna talk about um, one unified district. Uh, next slide. Sorry, Jenny, are, oh. you on page, are you on page four right now? Yes. Thank you. Um, in terms of what your, um, what the community members preferences are for um, the Rochester specific campus was this question, um, so A is status quo, B is, um, let's see, the town taking over the high school, C is the town taking over the elementary school, and D is some sort of outside entity. So the one that really rises to the top here is B, which was 55%. Um, our century pursue the option of the town taking over the high school building. Um, and that was, um, I don't have the percentages, but both Stockbridge and Rochester, that was the highest answer for, um, for that question. And I won't get into it, but some of the other, um, other um, ideas that residents had in terms of other, other identities, entities that would take over, that could possibly take over or down in the bottom. Um, housing on enterprises, medical use, senior, senior uses are a few ideas that were thrown out there. Next slide. And so this um, kind of four options about kind of similar to um, before we asked what folks preferences were for the building. And this kind of gets into the details of, of what folks um, felt about each specific option that was listed earlier either keeping status quo, the town taking over the high school, the town taking over the elementary or an outside entity. And the, the, highest, um, the highest agree and strongly agree for this one um, combined for the towns was the town taking over the high school. And um, conversely, the one with the lowest 
agree or strongly agree was the town taking over the elementary building and then the two other options kind of fell in between those. Next slide. And to kind of diving a little bit more into um, if, if we do not utilize either the elementary or the high school building, what would folks support that that, that, that building, um, you know, what would happen with that building? Um, really three answers are all pretty high in terms of um, working with the town to take over the unused building or the supervisory union or another entity, um, a slight, slight higher community response for um, discussing with the, with the SU, whether it was some SU option, but all three of those were pretty high, um, 46 to, to 53% answered either A, B, or C. And this was a question where folks could answer more than one question. So those percentages, um, you know, they're not gonna, add, they don't add up to one. It's just a matter of how many people answered that specific question. Mm -hmm. And then kind of similar with the bottom, um, you know, they're not cumulative. People could, could check more than one. So this had to do with, um, I know there's been various thoughts about what should or should not be used at the, um, at the high school building if it, you know, could be partially used. So essentially the A and B has to do with using the school for educational purposes and then C and D have to do with using it for special events. And then E would be saying um, that those folks didn't want the, um, the high school building utilized at all by the students. So as you can see for um, both either educational purposes or special events, there was quite a bit higher response for um, community members that agreed with um, being able to use the space for those purposes um, if the town or whomever took over the building. And both of those were 62 and 63% for A and C. Next slide. Um, so hypothetically speaking, if the elementary school in your town were to cease to, to exist, where would, um, where would you prefer to send your elementary elementary students um, to elementary school. So there's a, this was the one, Ethan, where there was a typo in the last one. So um, I won't get into the details, but basically the, um, the data wasn't um, matching up with what was being looked up. So um, in the last one, and Carl had pointed this out and I knew it was off because I remembered that there were, there were students. So last time in B and C, um, it showed a zero for Stockbridge and Rochester. So now the correct number. Um, so if you lived in if you live in Rochester, seven residents said that they would send to Stockbridge, and then four Stockbridge residents said they would send to Rochester. One person did say one person from Stockbridge said that they would still send them to Stockbridge, even though there was no Stockbridge Elementary School, um, which doesn't answer the question. But I left that that number in there. Um, so the highest for um, the highest for Stockbridge, the highest response was Killington, and the highest response for Rochester was Middlebury. Middlebury had eight, and they um, a close second to that was Stockbridge. So, I mean, those are pretty close with the sample we have. So those are, um, I'd say, neck and neck for Middlebury and Stockbridge for that one. And then at the bottom, um, basically as um, how important is an elementary in your school if the um, if the district was to unmerge in both towns, which um, I think we could have all foreseen is a pretty high agree or strongly agree. Um, so 75% either agreed or strongly agreed that it would be important to maintain an elementary school in their town. Next slide. Um, so these are, um, the two questions are pretty similar. The top one has residents rates, what their primary factor would be for elementary school. And the bottom is for middle or high school in terms of where they would send their kids. Um, so kind of taking out the not applicable or, or no opinion, um, 
the highest for both of them. Um, and this again was a check all that apply so they could answer, um, you know, you could answer all of, you know, A, B, C, and D. And the highest for both was C based on school programming, um, which is really the highest for middle and high school. And then for the elementary was kind of, kind of a broad array um, was actually the lowest being the availability of school transportation. Next slide. Um, so this is kind of one of the, the big highlights of the survey. So the top one asked if residents were supportive of the merger and then the bottom one asked um, if they would prefer to unmerge. And this shows, and this is the one where, um, so there's the normal orange and blue and then off to the right. I combined um, agree or strongly agree and then neutral and then disagree or strongly disagree. I don't know if I said that right. Disagree or strongly disagree is the third one. So as you can see, there's um, it's not quite equal, but um, the pie pieces are um, you know almost pretty equal there. So there's definitely a lot of opinions in both towns. And like I said earlier, there's definitely you know there's different trends in each town, which you can see here. Um, so the um, the Rochester being more likely to support um, the merger than the Stockbridge. Um, and then it almost, Jenny, you, know, you would Jenny, expect, oh, Jenny, go ahead. Just a clarification here. I'm not sure I totally understand the difference between these bars and then the pie chart as far okay. as what you're saying. If you yep. could explain that to me a little more. So to take the top one, I'm currently supportive of the Rochester and Stockbridge merger. So the ones and twos combined, those make up the, the disagree or strongly disagree. Mm -hmm. And those um, show up as the pink, the 36, so 36% um, combined of both towns either disagree or strongly disagree that they support the merger. And then number three is the neutrals. They're left all by themselves. They're at 26%. Mm -hmm. And then if you add up the, um, the fours and fives, so these are on nice even numbers here. It looks like 15 plus. So there's 15 number fours and 25 number fives. And if you took those as a percent, those are the folks that agree or strongly agree, okay. support the merger. So those are at 38%. Got you. Thank you. I appreciate so there's, um, and then down below, you would expect them to be exact opposites, but you know, some people don't, they may not support it, but they may not want to unmerge because they have faith in us that they're going to support it someday and, you know, might answer differently. Um, so those numbers are, are pretty close to each other. Next slide. So those are the summary of the multi, the multi-choice questions, which are pretty easy. Those are a lot easier to um, kind of show what's going on since they're just based on numbers and how many people, um, voted for which one. So for the following slides, these are the open-ended questions. Um, so the first one, in 50 words or less, what do you think should be the primary vision of RSUD? So as you can see these, so this is, um, this slide here, I just took all the answers and did a word cloud. Um, so I'm not sure who's familiar with word cloud. So it basically, um, it's a program that just, you know, the, the, the more frequently a word comes up in people's answers, we'll give it, um, we'll make it look bigger. So education is a big one. So that's a plus. People think the vision should be education. And some of them are, um, are obviously kind of generic. So obviously, you know, Stockbridge and Rochester, those will come up. Um, school, best, community, students, they're kind of generic. Um, it all kind of depends on how, how these are worded. So it's, you know, not, doesn't really shine the light on, um, you know, one certain word that pops up. Um, Cause they're, um, you know, you can kind of, if you want to scroll to the next slide. So this page and the next page, these are people's actual questions. And so I could just kind of um, categorize them into certain ideas, but I don't want to, 
kind of give false impressions of what what folks intentions were so i just listed and then i'm not going to read these but you know it'll be something in the pdf that people can look at um or maybe it's a board we decide that we want to look at these since um you know the word cloud looks nice but it doesn't really give us any shining answers of what the vision would be from residents so you know it could be something that we could look at and categorize um but for the folks or but for the purposes of just kind of screening through the survey on a big level this is just a list of what these are you can scroll down and then next slide so name name one new way Stockbridge or Rochester students and communities could collaborate together so again most of these are pretty generic um, so you kind of have to look past some of the big words, unfortunately. Um, so community, you know, that's good. Kids, education, school, students. Um, there's a few that if you start looking, um, you know, it's the words get a little bit smaller. You can see opportunities, programs, extracurricular, quality activities, um, together, outdoor, um, staff, share. Um, I think share is a good one. Combine. Um, so again, no big, um, no, no big aha moments here, but um, just kind of shows you, um, you know, there's not like a magic bullet here, and all, but also there's people have a lot of different ideas, so a lot of different um, words are popping up here. If you want to scroll down, and then the same, the same format that I won't um, read into here. You can scroll down. Scroll down. So this one's a little bit easier to um, create a word cloud for. Uh, name two or three offerings that you believe are critical to maintain or would like offered. And on this one, on the, the bottom right, I did include, um, you know, I did try to, to categorize what, um, what I thought some folks were, were intending here. Um, and then also with the cloud kind of goes along with that. Um, so when I kind of compartmentalize things, our had 18 responses, music and band, I kept together. Those have 17, second language, 11, outdoor field trips, 10. Um, build curriculum is what I call the next one, it's nine. And that included answers that had to do with um, either reading or math or person had mentioned, um, you know, test scores and getting those better included um, those sort of uh, core classes into the, the build curriculum. Um, theater with five, sports four, STEM three, PE two, technology two. And then at one um, came in winter wellness, enrichment classes, civics, school counseling, school nurse, and one, one planet program. Um, and you can see some of these words, you know, there's less of the the Stockbridge students, Rochester, kind of generic words that pop up on this um, since we're, you know, more focused question on specific art, um, specific answers. Let's scroll down. And then again, these are just what people's actual answers were. Um, so please list any thoughts we have on how to attract young families to our communities. Again, this is another, um, you know, there's a lot of different results, so it didn't really um, have an aha word that pops out. Um, choice, um, opportunities, better learn, families, facilities, uh, community, education, housing popped up a little bit darker than some words. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot of ideas there. And then you can scroll down and those are the lists as well. And then the last one, any additional comments the folks may have? Um, so the, the one that kind of pops right up in the center and I didn't create this, it was just kind of randomized on the, the website is community. So I thought that was nice. Um, that really came to, 
came to the full to the forefront. Um, children, school students, you know, again more kind of generic words. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different thoughts out there on that. So nothing, unless you try and um, compartmentalize and categorize and try to guess what folks are thinking there, then you know, there's a lot of different ideas. If you want to scroll down, that's the, the actual answers from folks. And then that is the end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you, Jenny. This is amazing. I really appreciate it. There's an incredible amount of information in here. Uh, much applause. Thank you, Ethan. Um, uh, what's your What's the board's pleasure about talking? I my instinct is to let everyone sort of have their uh, a comment moment. Um, what I, I think the question that comes out to me for everybody is, what have you learned from this? And um, what's new to you from this? And why don't I just go through and, and uh, take a moment. Megan? You available, Megan? Are you on? Hey there. Um, well, it's going to take me some time to digest, but um, I, I think that there's some, some good room to grow the unified merger. Because there is, there seems to be a bit of neut neutrality, and I think if you know we could work together to create good programming that is highlighted in these in the survey, that you know we could start to maybe bring people more around. So I thank Jenny very much because I think this survey is very helpful. Keith. Well, as I look at the information, you know, I. I taking a quick analysis of it. Um, for instance, I look at the survey on page four, which basically says 75% of the community, when you add the two communities together, basically 75% of the people um, want to uh, divest themselves of the high school building. It's pretty clear. Um, I think the survey tends to muddy the waters a bit when you go to page six, because you have all those multiple options that people can select um, numerous, uh, you know, times. So that really sort of muddies it. But I think it's clear cut uh, that both communities share an interest in closing the high school. Uh, it's pretty clear cut. Um, you know, and I look at uh, page nine, it says, you know, you've got basically just like in, in politics in general, it's the undecided that's going to make the decision. You've got uh, both sides, you know, pretty much equally split on those questions that were asked. And it's the, the 25 and 26 percent in each of the pie graphs that say that these are people that are kind of on the fence and can go either way. Mm -hmm. um, and then with word cloud, I'm not a big fan of word cloud, so I won't comment on that. Uh, those are my initial thoughts. Okay. Uh, Amy. I, uh, I definitely agree with Megan that, um, there's a lot of great information here and it, you know, we, we, to take some time to digest it. Um, I am saddened that there was only 17 parents though, that, uh, filled out this survey, um, which, uh, you know, and um, let's see. And then the next was um, it was was the people filling out the survey, the uh, survey, a parent of a, an alumni from either one of our buildings, and that was um, much higher than. That was almost uh, almost seventy people who don't have kids in the school, never have had kids in the school. Um, so I, you know, I. That that is something from for me that I'm you know kind of struggling with um, with this information and, and some of the, those pieces. Um, I think Jenny did an incredible job, and I want to thank her for what she has put together here. This is, is absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I need to kind of sit on it for a little bit more and digest it a little bit more. I guess. I'm, 
Mm -hmm. Good. Carl? Um, first of all, I, I, I have to agree. Um, I had the same conclusion that Keith had that, you know, the um, survey seems to, 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 to indicate that A, the, 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 the district needs to divest itself of a building and B, that that building is, is the high school. Um, the other thing that I thought was interesting and I bring up because of, you know, some of the programs that our current governor um, has, has uh, supported in the past, which is that our community says that it really, really values having two buildings. And Governor Scott has at various times supported a um, student-teacher ratio, um, which either comes with, uh, it, it came in his first iteration with the, the idea that you just would have to have that ratio and then the second idea that if you didn't have that ratio, you'd be paying you paying a tax penalty. Um, what I think is important about that is that should he get reelected and should that be something that gets presented again? Because historically, big initiatives are always presented in the first year of the biennium um, that we should have a plan for how we can pivot to 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 if there is such a bill and I'm not. I'm not trying to be all chicken little, the sky is falling, but our community wants there to be a school in Stockbridge and a school in Rochester. And if we have to support um, some form of, uh, of uh, teacher, teacher student classroom ratios, we should start thinking about, and Jamie, this is not supposed to be us giving you a high priority task, but we should start be thinking about how we could structure our classrooms to A, meet a uh, teacher student ratio, meaning like all fifth grade and sixth grade might need to be in one campus versus the other campus and still support having two campuses. Good. Um, uh, I've got, let me go and then I'll jump to Jenny. I've been sort of going back and forth, Stockbridge, Rochester. Um, when I saw this for the first time last meeting, uh, uh, the uh, how many people wanted to unmerge just grabbed me, and how many people, um, you know, like the numbers going to Killington, um, was strong for me, and 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 I was sad because I just was like, okay, another indication of that we're you know, we may be bringing these schools in line in some ways, but we haven't brought our communities and and the board uh, in line. But then I, uh, the, the thing that was very positive uh, for me that was pointed out to me by Bonnie was that everybody wants to keep a school in their own community. And something about that, you know, uh, I, I, as Carl, you bring up those issues, there are gonna be all kinds of issues um, plaguing that possibility, but that that's really a strong uh, part of our vision is to keep that happening, um, is to keep a building going in each town. And uh, it may take a political fight even up to the state to make that happen. But that's something I can really get behind is that idea of um, an active viable school in each, in each, in each town. Um, so, so I went from sort of a little bit of despair to some real hope. Jenny, very curious to hear what you say, because of course you've lived with this a lot longer than the rest of us. Yeah, actually, um, so kind of being number crunching, I haven't totally stepped back to see what, what surprised me the most. I think one thing that surprised me the most was the number of neutrals. Um, I found it was interesting that in terms of the um, support or not supporting um, was pretty much equal, but the number of um, neutral was higher than what I was expecting. I was a little surprised on the, um, I can't find the slide here, but the one about um, I guess what um, what ac what activities and um, programs were important. Um, I, I don't have the the old survey that Stockbridge had did, um, and I might be a little biased that there's only um, three STEM um, answers for that. I thought that was going to be higher. Um, I wasn't so surprised, you know, the art and music. Um, 
those sort of things. I like the technology that a couple people listed. Um, but again, I think that these are ones that, you know, it was open-ended. So someone may have, you know, checked a box if they had seen it sort of thing. Um, but I think that was kind of one thing. Um, and I think a lot of it I wasn't too surprised about, but in terms of big picture, I've been, um, you know, more focused on just kind of crunching the numbers that I haven't really taken a look back um, in terms of digesting everything. Would it be useful to, um, uh, to bring this up um, and, and maybe to ask every, every board member to come with their conclusions to our November meeting? Because we've talked a bit about, you know, having time, having time. Um, um, I have one conclusion that I'd like to ask for action on tonight, and that is, I, I would like, if Jenny, if you're up for it, I would like a survey to go out to parents uh, through the school, through our schools. Do you think that would be something tailored differently or this exact survey? My, um, I think it would be tailored differently. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it's, um, yeah, I think it's simpler. I think it's a little more direct, uh, more about what do you want offered? Um, how do you feel about the merger? I don't think we need to worry about the building quite as much. Um, as I say to Keith, I think we're going to be taking some action on that. Um, uh, I, I, I'm, and I, I'm totally open for this. Um, as I say, I would like, I, I would entertain a motion that we do this. Um, um, so I would, I think giving Jenny, Jenny, would you be up for doing it again for uh, uh, another questionnaire? Would yeah, you? I'm up for helping. Okay. Um, then gathering questions that we want our, want to know from our parents. Um, what kind of questions would there be? I think Carl has his hand raised, Ethan. Oh, sorry, I can't see you, Carl. So it's a small screen. Yeah, go ahead, Carl. Uh, sorry, I, um, I certainly support drilling down into our parent community in particular because they're the people that, that, that are, are the most important stakeholders as far as their kids' education. What I would caution against is having another survey that uh, ends up kicking any kind of decision uh, 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 down the road longer. I think that, you know, again, we need to, uh, we need to, uh, as, as we were saying, address the issues. And I feel like I have, <laughs> I have all of James. Which, which, Carl, you know, Carl, which issue do you feel we're punting down the road? Uh, I would end that. I feel like, I, I feel like Jamie said that uh, um, we're, you know, we're trying to be mindful. I would, I would want us to not, I've, I've seen, I've, I've heard on social media that people have commented that this survey is a way to delay us making decision. So I think it's very, very important that if we do another survey, we, you know, make it clear that this is not a stall tactic. Cause like I said, that's what I've heard. What, what are we, what are we media. stalling exactly? I don't know what we're stalling. Um, making a decision on buildings. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, yes. Um, I certainly, I don't, I don't, I don't see that. I see we're moving forward and we're going to continue to move forward um, to find a, um, a solution to having the um, high school off our, our, off, off the school's chart. Um, that's what I've said months ago and um, um, I'm going to continue, but that's, I, I, obviously, we need to get the will of the board on that. Um, Ethan, what do we feel? Why not? We're at 40 minutes 40. on this. Thank you. Um, do we have further comments on this tonight? Um, I could also save this this survey idea could um, gestate for a while, and we could um, come back to it on in November, and we could think about if we really if we have enough information from this, or if we need something more. Does that sound and like a good solution? I'm not sure what you're thinking the intent, intent would be, Ethan, but I was thinking that it would be less facilities related and more 
kind of programming and what what parents were looking for. I I would end, um, I would love to see what um, what you would come up with questions, uh, Jenny, for next for November. Would you be willing to do that? Sure. And maybe if anybody comes up with one, um, send it in. I. Yeah. I, I see this as an ongoing thing that I don't think we should do just once, that I think it should be a rolling thing we continue to do so that people know they have a way to get feedback to us if they aren't able to come to meetings or something like that. I do not see it as a way to punt. I see it as something that's informing all the actions we're taking. Um, and we're also learning from it about whether we're taking enough action or not. Does that sound like the the... Do, do, the, do you as the board agree with that summation? Hey, Ethan, it's Megan. Um, yeah. I do agree. I'd like to wait till the next. I'd like to get through this first survey. I'd like to see what kind of questions we can come up for a parent survey for November. Mm -hmm. But I do I do agree with you that I do think it's like a state of the state. You know, it's a state of our union. And I think having feedback from our constituents and our community members are very, very important because um, I think the survey will change over time if we move through some of our issues and it can really well, help that, yeah, define can, our, yeah. you know, our intent and our, and our purpose. Thank you. Any, any further comment on this? No, Carl, Amy. Good. I'm, yeah, Carl. You're done. I'm, I said I, I was good. I just wanted to get my point across. Gotcha. Good. All right. Um, then I think we've we've done this for tonight. I think it can um, we can bring up some conclusions um, in November. Uh, possibly board comment might be a good time to do that. Just so we're, if we don't need an agenda item, that it's a possibility for people to bring up. This is what I saw in the survey. Okay. Good. Then moving on. Sorry, I lost my um, agenda here for a moment. Public comment, Ethan. Yes, I know. I've... And you, you did not give me a specific time limit for public comment or anything. I don't know if you want to, you know, lay down your ground rules. Um, I would like, uh, let's keep us in the ballpark of 20 minutes. And certainly let us when we're 20 minutes. Um, this is one thing I struggle with, with the um, video camera, making sure I see numbers correctly. So I will uh, certainly ask for any help. I see, as far as video, I see that Sue Roboto is on, and then I see three, four numbers, 02. And that, as you say, just in case anybody doesn't know this, all we see is the area code and then the last two digits. So that's how we'll be identifying you. And um, I heard the comment, I just came on earlier, I heard the comment that we want to give you more time, at least a good 15, 20 seconds, maybe a full minute to respond because there is some time for you to hear, click and get in. Um, I will try and work through all of these. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is that just in general comments, we may not always have an answer for you. Um, and I want you to know that we make note of all comments and that we will, um, that we hear them. I hear them certainly, but I may not have a complete answer for you. Um, so just know that I may respond. Thank you for your comment. Um, we'll take that into consideration. It's please know that it's not a way to shut you down. I just may not have an answer and I'd rather not be making up answers in the moment or have any of the other board members making up answers in the moment. If we don't have a consensus, around a particular issue. Um, all right. Ethan? Yes. Um, one quick comment. Um, it, it, we, cannot, um, we cannot limit public comment to a, to a time certain. We can't say you only got 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. Our, our bylaws says, say that any um, registered resident of, uh, or registered voter of Stockbridge or Rochester is entitled to at least one comment of five minutes. Five minutes. Got you. That's right. Thank you, Carl. Much no worries. Appreciated. Much appreciated. Nope. That's good. This is how I learn. Uh, we'll start with you, Sue. Do you have a comment for tonight? Sue Roboto. From... Are you... You're muted. 
How about that? Is that Vic? Is it Vic? Yes. Hi, Vic. Hi, Ethan. So, well, first, congratulations. Can you just identify yourself? Yeah, yes. Vic Rubato, Rochester. Thank you. Uh, first, just to uh, thank and congrat congratulate Ethan and Amy for stepping up to the leadership roles of the board. I, I didn't know that was coming, and I, I appreciate uh, that. Uh, and I just wanted to pay attention to the uh, survey discussion tonight. I thought it was very helpful. Um, and I wanted to thank uh, Jenny for the great work. I think it was a terrific uh, questionnaire she put together. Uh, the results uh, indicating uh, the interest in divesting of the high school was sort of in line with, with what I think a lot of people have been thinking and, and uh, what we were looking forward to in terms of the, uh, the work on repurposing the high school. So uh, that's consistent. And uh, that's really all I have to say. And uh, just look forward to the next uh, discussion at the November meeting. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Vic. Much appreciated. Uh, we'll go to our phone callers now. Um, 802, last two digits, 02. Do you have a comment? And please identify yourself and what town you're from, please. Hey, Ethan, it's Tim Pratt. Hey, Tim. How's it going? Good. Um, so originally in, in the proposal that was given the BOE, and afterwards, there was no money in transportation drop off on both ends of the day so that is a big part and by getting the high school off the shoulders there's some money that can go towards that the other thing is the boe is accepting uh articles of agreement and if stockbridge feels that they need a different article of agreement to feel that they're getting uh the same um, Oh, I think no, you're, uh, you, uh, Tim. I think you might be breaking in and out. I'm not sure. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, I, can I, you I, hear me? I can't hear you, but then it sounded like it dropped out there for a moment. You were saying they're accepting new articles agreement, and if Stockbridge needs a new article, and then I sort of lost you there. So just if you could pick it yeah. up. So, so I would suggest that we think about writing an article that the Stockbridge people would feel more comfortable with because the articles of agreement were rushed. I mean, nobody on the 706B committee will not admit that it was a rushed deal. Um, and now that we're three years in, there could be a new article without getting out of any merge and have everybody feel that they're getting their fair share. So between transportation and the articles of agreement, uh, if you're going to do a new survey with parents, uh, they might not be the ones that are aware of that. So that might want to come up in your next meeting also. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. That's a, a very interesting ar idea about new articles. Um, 802 star star 91. Please identify yourself and what town you're from. Do you have a comment? This is Caitlin McKinstry from Stockbridge. Hi, Caitlin. Um, I've got probably more of a statement and then a question. But okay. Carl mentioned potentially moving a grade over to Rochester or whichever. We don't want that. It it was brought up as a as an idea before, and many many people were against it. Um, and I would just ask, as I have done in emails and I have done in person, to stop throwing around these hypotheticals. Stick to the actual articles of agreement. It was voted on that we kept our K-6 school here in Stockbridge and that Rochester kept their K-6 school in Rochester. Mm -hmm. So that's one statement. Um, I also um, am wondering, is Carl going to... Um, write an apology or have a, a same amount of apology for the behavior at the previous meeting at all for the public. Um, I know he had written an apology email to charity that he actually sent to me because he thought it was me that he was behaving ill towards at the last meeting. Um, it wasn't me, it was charity. 
Um, so I'm just wondering, is there going to be a public apology, especially since he's, he's being allowed to stay on the board despite the amount of complaints that had come in about him? Oh, I, yes. Um, the one thing I'll say is that is there's no mechanism for removing um, a board member, um, at least not that I know of. Jamie, do you know about this? As far as I know, it is up and um, he serves at the will. Um, so there I, don't, is, I don't know about that. I, I can actually answer that, Ethan. Okay, got gotcha. you. Thank you. There is nothing in statute, nor is there anything in the board's bylaws about removing a board member. Mm -hmm. My resignation uh, as board chair was presented to the board and feedback was given to me by the board. And I am remaining on the board currently. Um, as far as apologies, um, I had sent you an apology and mistake, Caitlin, because when Julie and I uh, were discussing who I was, was uh, actually I thought it was Charity. She thought it was uh, was you, um, since she was uh, the person that was calmer at the time. Um, I sent the apology to you. I have since sent the apology to Charity. Um, as far as apologizing to the community, I think that um, you know my behavior made it obvious that I should not be continuing as the leader of the group. So I've stepped down as that. That is the apology um, that has been given. I failed as Okay, duly have... noted please only please apology please is do not, please do not is... whoa, 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 Carol, hold on a sec. Hold on, Caitlin. Can you Can just give him, give him a moment, let him finish his statement, and then I'll get back to you, I promise. Okay. Okay, as long as it doesn't take away from my time. No, no, not at all. Okay. Carl, yes. What Finish up what you were saying, please. I made the apologies that uh, uh, I felt I need to make as far as the public statement. My behavior was inappropriate, and I've resigned as the board chair because I obviously cannot provide the leadership that the board needs. So I've resigned as that. That's, you know, uh, 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 that's where we stand. As far as... Um, you know, my continuing service, um, there is not a mechanism to remove me. Um, the board did not ask me to, uh, to, to resign further. And that is pretty much all the public comment I have about that. Okay, so duly noted, the only apology you feel as a representative of us, the voters, is you stepping down as chair. And because there's no way for us as a public to remove you, you're just deciding yourself to stay on the board. Understood. Um, my second question is, amongst all of this talking with the Rochester Select Board about the high school building, has there been any other steps taken other than talking to them? Have you spoken to a surveyor to come and look at where uh, property lines are going to be divided or how the electrical or control boards for the elementary school that are in the high school could be shifted over to the elementary school. Um, because I feel like the, whether the select board is deciding or not to take the high school is taking a lot of time. So I think there should be other steps that are taken um, and that there possibly should be a time limit on when the select board needs to decide on the building so that we could get it out there for sale for somebody who does want it and is willing to commit to it and take it. Have any of those steps been made? I, I can tell you that steps, definite steps have been made as far as separation of the property and understanding the, all the parameters of the real estate piece of that. Um, uh, we are in process with that. We made a motion as I believe it was two meetings ago to uh, de designate some money toward that purpose. Um, and um, there has been discussion within the board and there will certainly be more um, on in the November meeting about um, uh, about where the select board stands and uh, and and our and, and moving forward. As I say, we're in this process and we're still in the decision making process about how much we're being advised to share with the public in terms of how much we should keep an executive session and that controls what we say. Um, there is some, there's strong debate in the board about the, 
the usefulness of this, but at this point we are keeping it in executive session and so it is privileged information, but just to tell you that we are taking action. Um, okay, that's, that's all I needed to know. Yes, I appreciate that, that Ethan. Um, and I believe this is my last question. Um, so since this questionnaire is going out to parents of children that are currently in school, um, I feel like that is a big exclusion to parents who have children who possibly, like for example, my daughter could be going to that school next year. Um, so excluding parents by just the parents who go to the schools with their kids, I feel kind of excludes the future parent population of the school as well. Point taken, thank you. When we think, if we think about this, if we think about how we do this, we'll certainly take that into consideration. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, star star nine seven. Would you have a comment? Hi, it's Charity Colton. Hi, Charity. Hi. Um, similar, but in a different direction to a question that uh, Caitlin just asked. I'm wondering if it would be beneficial to maybe make up just a one page bullet list of the items that create all the complexities that have to be worked out with the, the, mer the dissolving of the Rochester High School building. Mm -hmm. um, I think there are a lot of people that may not understand that it's not just so simple as saying, oh, we got to get two fuel tanks because right now there's one. I have no idea if that's even the case, but um, making sort of a, a sheet that could be put up at the November election and just posted on each of the two town halls so that people can see this is something that's in discussion, that's no secret, and yep. here are the complexities that are in the works to figure that out. I don't know if that's something that's allowed to be done, but it might help give people an idea of why the timeline on this is not something that's set in stone, um, and that one contractor that would have to figure out a piece of a puzzle may not may not be the only contractor to figure out that piece of the puzzle um, it, and it would help validate and explain why this is not a simple we want this done in 30 days quick claim type situation that's all excellent thank you charity point taken and uh, believe me the, the, your point about a bullet list has been raised in uh, in some of our discussions um, so uh, it's definitely in the works Okay. And uh, star Mr. nine nine. Sorry, Ethan. Yes. I just wanted to. I. I we're not allowed to uh, 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 post any kind of information at an election place. Just to. Just to. Oh. Just to. I mean, charities. Charity statement is a good idea, and I'm not trying to disagree with it. I'm just saying that we can't put up. Um, we 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 can't put up uh, information like that at a at a at a polling place. Fair enough. Uh, we, yeah, when, but I, point heard, the point's heard, um, needs to get information out. We're not helping ourselves and we're, we're in, in the process and going to talk more about getting that out, information out. Uh, star 99. Um, yep, that's me. Can you hear me? Is this Joanne? Yes. From so, Stockbridge? Yes. yes. For the public uh, my question um, has been answered that you haven't um, made a Decision, well, you have made a decision that we are still not privileged to know what's going on in the meeting between the Rochester and the, and school, the school board in Rochester uh, about the high school, and that's fine. Um, but so, but I do have another question. Um, if there's so much interest, or it appears to be so much interest in the Killington Elementary School, is what they're you know what they're doing, and if there was no school, they people would send their kids there. It might be kind of interesting to maybe send an you know administration or teachers or just to see what they're doing up there and why it's so why you know they rate so high and what they're doing differently. I hear you, Joanne. I have to say, after I read that survey the first time at the last meeting, the first thing I did was go on the Killington uh, School website and just just start to get a feel for it. Um, right. I, th I think it's a very good, interesting idea to say, what is it about? And maybe 
a further survey would ask, what is it about this place that you're so interested in? Um, same thing would be for the Rochester people. What is it about Middlebury that you're so interested in? Exactly. I, I, I'm be, sorry I omitted that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. No, no, no. Yep. It's just, I, I, I'm just extrapolating. Um, uh, yep. But I think it's a really great point that, that, because then it, it gives some, some detail to a number. Um, right. And, and that's really what we can work with. We can't work with just the number. We need to know the details. Right. Thank you very Good. much. Thank you, Joanne. Much appreciated. I believe that's everyone I have on my list. Is that what everybody else sees? That we've covered anybody? Are there any further comments of, of those people who made their comments? I'll give you a minute or two. It's very good. Well, I, I think not hearing any he has a comment. Oh, yes. Sorry. Uh, Ethan, this, there's a private caller listed that may be Orca, but we don't know that. Uh, okay. I don't, I didn't see any other numbers on my list. No, there's no, there's no number. <clears throat> there's no number. It just says private caller. Oh, I see no caller info. Okay. Um, well, if they haven't responded in this time, I think we're safe to say that they're, yep. they're, they're good. Thank you, Ray, for pointing that out. Um, our regularly scheduled board meeting, and please remind me of this. I, I want to. Well, I wanted to jump in on that under other. Yeah, it's on election night. Yeah, I thought we'd already talked about, it and I thought we'd moved it. Well, no, that's, we that's couldn't right. agree, and I said I would send out an email. Oh, uh, that's um, right, and you didn't send us an email. Yeah. So let's. Um, so I the would, board calendar currently has the fifth open, or the ninth open. The fifth is. Um, Thursday, the fifth of that week. Oh, I hate Thursdays. Um, I really appreciate. I've already got one on Monday, and I've got one on Wednesday. So you've got what about uh, the ninth, Monday the ninth. What about Monday? I'm open Monday the ninth. I would I would entertain a motion to move our um, annual uh, November scheduled RSUD meeting to November the ninth. Would somebody move that motion? So moved. Second. Seconded by Jenny, I think it was, or Megan. I didn't hear. Um, Megan, then Jenny. Any discussion? I would just ask, can everybody make that for the ninth? Um, an important thing to uh, point out is that um, when the meeting was on election day, there was no way that whoever was elected to replace Keith as an interim member could be sworn in. If we uh, if we have a meeting, if we have a meeting uh, on the ninth, um, it's important that Keith understands that should whoever is elected to replace him, and whether that's him or not, with him he's fine. He's already he's already been sworn in by the the, the, the town clerk. Um, but he needs to be available in case whoever did get elected, if it wasn't him, was not yet sworn in as a board member by their town clerk. Got you. Um, how does that sound, Keith? Does that sound fine to you that you, you, would, you would be the default unless the person gets sworn in? Would you be okay with that? Not a problem. Okay, thank you, Keith, much appreciated. Um, with no further problems, um, no further discussion, uh, I will ask the vote all in favor for moving our meeting to the ninth, signify by saying aye. 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 That heard him. Good. It's done. Our next meeting will be November the 9th, uh, virtual. I would like to ask, um, there has been talk about making these meetings, uh, trying a public meeting. Um, I don't know how to go about making this happen. Um, and maybe we'll have to just see how the numbers go in these next, in the next couple weeks. Um, I don't know. Ethan, well, you and I can talk. I mean, I have yeah. hybrid meetings in other districts. So. Great. Let's let me, Jane, Jimmy, let, let you and talk, and we'll present something at the next meeting. Good. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Looks like, I think Carl had something. Oh, I, Carl, wanted, I, I wanted to it's say. So dark. Yeah. Sorry, Carl. I can't see your hand sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I would like us to, before we go to uh, resume meetings, I would like us to make sure we get AOE guidance 
because the AOE guidance is that we're not supposed to be having in-person meetings. And, and that's not, that's actually, Carl, they came out last, uh, about a week and a half ago and said, as long as it's a worn public meeting after school hours, that that's permissible. Okay, then then I am I am fine with that as long as our administration is fine with having to have the space cleaned in the morning and and and, and you know the extra, extra janitorial. No, I appreciate all those considerations. I I'm about to turn sixty in two weeks and had to curtail all all the festivities I had in mind because it's just not possible right now. So I, I I'm being very realistic about that and understanding. Um, so let's we'll take that into consideration and I but the next meeting will be virtual. Thank you much. Um, all in favor. Good night and good work. We got in under uh, two hours to start. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening.